Hello everyone and welcome to the widget styling lecture. So in this lecture we're going to learn about the various ways to style widgets. So as you can see here, I have downloaded the widget styling corresponding notebook and I went ahead and ran the first cell, IPy widgets as widgets and ipython.display import display here. So there's basic styling and the widgets distributed with ipython can be styled with these following traits, width, height, various colors, borders, widths, and styles, and also the font, style, weight, size, and family. So you can mess around with the width and height, the basic background color, the border colors, and then the font parameters as well. So for example, here's an example of what a button widget can be styled as. So we can see we've set button equal to widgets.button, and then we've took description, set it equal to hello world, and then we could set up all these parameters here as far as describing how it's going to be stylized. So you can add these parameters to most of the widgets available to you and you can start styling them. Okay, so you can see here I've set the width equal to 100, height is equal to 2EM. EM is a valid HTML unit of measurement. So having a knowledge of CSS and HTML will definitely help you understand styling here a little better. And then we've set color to lime. You can also set colors by name. And then we've also set background and border color. And then I'm going to display the button. So here it is displayed. And let's go ahead and change some stuff around so we can make sure it's actually taking effect. I'll set the border color equal to red. I'll set this color equal to green. I will change the description to say change. And now if we run it, you can see that there's some slight changes there. You can also select colors by the color code or, again, just straight uh, text. Now, not every single name will work, but most common color names will as strings. All right, let's go ahead and close that. So I also want to mention parent-child relationships. So to display, for example, widget A inside of widget B, then widget A must be a child of widget B. And widgets that can contain other widgets have what's known as a children attribute. So one widget is the child of another. And this attribute can be set um, using keyword arguments in the widgets constructor or after the construction. So calling display on an object with children will automatically display the children. So let's look at what we have here in the cell. Again, I've imported display and I created a float slider, a text box, and then set a variable called container called widgets.box and set a parameter called children equal to these two widgets here. So note how I'm passing in the list of the widgets themselves to this children equals under box. And then I'm setting using the uh, property names of this container border underscore color style width. So right now I'm looking at red dotted width is three. Let's go ahead and change that to five, and then I'm going to display this container. So what's going to happen is this container contains both of these children, this float range and the string. So if I display it, here we see this container. The container itself is only this uh, border here, and it contains this slider and this text box. So after this parent is displayed, children can be added to the parents after it's been displayed. So note here, I have container equals widgets.box, set the container border styles, display container, and now I'm gonna say integer range is equal to widgets int slider, and I'm saying container.children is equal now to this single item list, int underscore range. And if I run this here, I've altered it to just have a single integer slider. Okay, so if you need to display a more complicated set of widgets, there are specialized containers that you can use. So to display multiple sets of widgets, you can use an accordion or a tab in combination of one box per set of widgets, which I'm about to show you below. And these quote unquote pages of the widgets are their children. So to set the title of the pages, use set underscore title. Let me show you what I mean by all that. 
So here I have an accordion example, and then below we have a tab widget example. So in the accordion example, I have two separate widgets that follow the same um, format, a name, zip, page, and then we have a text, a bounded integer text, and then a box containing the two children. Same here, a box containing two children of name two, zip two. First one is just a text with description location. Second one is just a description with zip and it can take in a number. So we have a string text, an integer text, and then a box that has them both as children. And then in order to put these together, I have the accordion feature from widgets and I'm gonna pass it children page one, page two which are essentially these boxes here. So you can see I almost have like a children within children here. And I'm gonna go ahead and display the accord or the accordion here. And I'm gonna set the titles from and to. So if I just run this, I have this little bit of an accordion function here with the from location and the to. And then I can go ahead and can fill stuff out. So I can say my location is uh, San Francisco zip code, let's say 90210, whatever. And then I can click here on two and do the, due to the accordion structure, it'll pull up two and then say, I wanna go to Los Angeles or wherever. And my zip code is 79, whatever, 999, doesn't matter. Okay, so this is what the accordion structure looks like when you're trying to stack children together. You can click them open so it's opening and unfolding like an accordion, and you can do it for both.